A prodigy is defined as a person, especially a child or young person, having an extraordinary talent or ability. Or at least that's a definition from dictionary.com. But what does Logitech mean when they say prodigy? Ingenious gaming performance for less? Gaming gear for the pros? Or a lineup for those first starting out? Hey guys, it's Wired here, and today we'll be reviewing the Logitech G403 Prodigy Wireless Gaming Mouse, a gaming mouse for gaming prodigies. The G403 is over a year old now and is part of Logitech's Prodigy line of gaming peripherals. This series was aimed at beginner gamers offering an exceptional performance without many sacrifices and a relatively low price. While at first it may seem like the case, many people view it otherwise. With a price tag of $85 for a keyboard, membrane mind you, and a whopping $100 to $130 price for a gaming mouse, casuals do not seem like the target audience. Recently, I have noticed a price drop from $130 for the wireless mouse to $100, so affordability is becoming a lot less of an issue. But it is still a large price premium compared to some other gaming mice, so it begs the question, is it worth it? The G403 has a Pixar 3366 optical sensor, which ranges from 200 to 1200 dpi, adjustable in the settings. It, being the top of the line sensor for gaming, tracks very smoothly and doesn't seem to have any acceleration, which is good. It performs very well in games and my accuracy seems to be spot on. The only problem? Not having used any other gaming mice other than my Razer Abyssus, I don't really have a point of reference, so I can't say for sure. The G403 does still feel better though, and as I've seen from other sources, it does seem to outperform many other sensors. In straight line tests it performs well, tracking accurately without too much problem. It doesn't seem to spin out, and in games I haven't noticed any problems at all. There also isn't any noticeable angle snapping, but occasionally I can cause this to happen. Note that this will never happen in normal use, rather I had to actually force this to happen. The DPI settings I used were 700 DPI, so it may be a bit less accurate at higher DPI's. During standard use I used 650 DPI for gaming, editing, and day-to-day -day mousing, just for reference. The mouse has a fairly large shape, making it fit for larger hands. It's also wider than a standard 2 to 1 ratio for a mouse, and has a fairly large hump. Personally, I use it in a fingertip or palm grip, although it fits most grip styles. I found that I don't really have a grip style, rather my hand adapts to the mouse that I'm using, so you might want to try this in stores first if you're not sure about the grip. However, I have felt that this was a bit big for me sometimes, but overall I have adapted the mouse shape and it fits very comfortably. The ergonomics are very safe, nothing weird or out of place like a pronounced indent on the side or grooves on the sides, and the mouse is a very universal mouse shape in general. The weight of the mouse is 107 grams, going to 117 with the included 10 gram weight. This is decently heavy compared to many other mice out there, but because of its wireless nature, I think the lack of a tether makes up for it. To add on to that, I do prefer slightly heavier mice, not too heavy like the G502, but slightly heavier so it has a satisfying heft to it while still being easy to move around. The add-on weight is a nice extra feature, but because of the heavy starting weight, I don't keep it in. Now let's talk about the wireless functionality of the mouse. The mouse is a wireless USB receiver that can connect to an extension cable which comes in the package. In any regular gaming or testing, there is no latency difference between regular wired mode and wireless. Because of that, unless the mouse is charging, there really is no reason to use the charging cable to connect your mouse, because it just creates unnecessary drag and slows the mouse down. On a single full charge, the mouse can last me multiple weeks. It is about 30 hours of use on a single full charge, which takes no longer than a few hours, and paired with a smart sleep system, can last for ages. Do take in mind, of course, that this battery life is on no lighting effects. With a wireless device, using any lighting is like suicide for the battery, so I recommend to leave it off. The mouse charges relatively quickly. On just one overnight charge, it can go from 0 to 100%, so if the battery starts getting low, just charge it when you go to bed and in the morning, it'll be full and ready for another multiple weeks of use. I set up the cable on my desk, so if needed, I can use it plugged in perfectly fine for gaming, but I still usually use it wireless. Now let's discuss Logitech's gaming software. In the program, you can set up custom key bindings, lighting effects, DPI, profile, and even surface tune your mouse to certain mouse pads. 
Overall, the software is a very complete package. The DPI adjusts in steps of 50 from 200 to 1200, and the surface tuner does a good job at setting up the mouse for a specific surface. The lighting effects are also plentiful, with rainbow wave, breathing, and a static color option for each of the two lighting zones. The mouse comes with onboard memory, which can save up to three profiles, and there's also an option to enable device-only profiles, which you can link to applications, games, and just have a larger amount of creatable profiles. I do have one gripe with the software though. I'm not sure if this is the Logitech gaming software's issue, or the mouse itself, but you can't light each individual region. For example, let's say I wanted to make the G logo purple, but the scroll wheel teal, that wouldn't be possible. The only adjustment for that would be toggling it on or off, but unfortunately they can't be set to certain colors individually at the same time. This isn't really a deal breaker, because if you're going to get the wireless variant, you would most likely have your lighting effects off anyways because of how absolutely draining it is on the battery. In short then, I guess, the G403 Wireless Prodigy Gaming Mouse is not for everyone. It does stand out with a good shape, albeit being a bit large for some hands, a top-notch sensor, very low latency especially for a wireless mouse, great battery life, good customization, and great software. And especially with this recently lowered price tag, I'd say that the G403 is definitely a steal. At this point, I will give a disclaimer, the review for the mouse is complete, so you can go watch something else if you feel like it. As for the discussion of whether or not wireless really is the future, I'm standing firm on my belief that it is. With the G403 Prodigy already being so good, I am really confident in the future of wireless peripherals, as well as just a wireless world. Obviously, right now, a wireless headset and gaming mouse are the only practical things out, but there's no doubt a good low-latency mechanical keyboard is on the horizon. A wireless display may also be a bit more distant, but it's still a huge possibility. And to add to that, the technology already exists for both of these things. There are wireless HDMI receivers for the monitor side, and Windows already has a wireless display connection ability, very much like Chromecast and other hardware. And quite a few me wireless mechanical keyboards also exist. I believe that within a few years, wireless technology will reach the point where it's not only available for consumers, but also low latency enough to, for high action gaming, and also affordable enough where it is the most accessible. What are your opinions on this wireless renaissance? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed what I have to say and think wireless is indeed the next step forward. Dislike if you still think Wired is superior, and subscribe for more tech content on Wired THD. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Wired, out. No, seriously, Wired needs to get out of here. Wireless is moving in.